Hello, my name is Miguel Cisneros Abreu, and welcome to Aromatherapy and Complementary Alternative Medicine. For the past 25 years, I've been researching, practicing, and writing education for ACAM, or Aromatherapy and Complementary Alternative Medicine. Today's session is uh, the basic knowledge of how to determine if, uh, if what you have in front of you is a real essential oils. Now, some of us, and many of us, know that essential oils come from plants, the real ones. Uh, they're through the distillation process or cold press, and historically has been used for medicine. Uh, so, let's go on and see how we can tell the difference, because there's a lot of essential oils that uh, says 100% pure on the shelf, there are not. Essential oils, the real ones, will last forever, will have a shelf life of forever. Uh, because of the aromatic alcohols, uh, they ferment just like one, so they become better with age. The non-real ones, although it says 100% pure, uh, they go bad or rancid every two years or three years. And the manufacturer will tell you that. The real essential oils you're able to put directly in your skin. It will penetrate, it will be absorbed by your skin. The non-real ones will leave an oily residue in your hand. And uh, some manufacturers will tell you not to put it directly in your skin. Mostly because it has petrochemical fragrance. We, it's good to point out that the term essential oils is interactive in both organic and in organic chemistry. So, by right you can call 100% pure essential oil that is made with 100% petroleum base. So let's just go through a few uh, a few mechanics to, to just tell if the oil is right or not. The first one is the texture. You will put a few drops in your fingertips unless the manufacturer says don't do it and then don't do it. Right away you know it's not the real essential oil so put it away. But let's say that it doesn't say that in the, in the label, so we'll use it directly on the skin. If we feel oil in it, like we do with this oil. So this lavender that we're using here is very greasy. It doesn't penetrate into the skin. And if we put it, the next test, if you put it in one hand, within, I will say 15 minutes, you're going to ask somebody to smell the hand and the fragrance is gone. If you leave it open, in a few days, you either will have no liquid or you will have no fragrance. And that process is called oxidation. And that's that because of the petrochemical that is used in, in, in that material. Oxidation is the same definition of a carcinogen. So it is not good to use an essential oil like this in the work of complementary medicine. Now, the real lavender, which we call ACAM lavender, in order to distinguish, because we do use it in CAM practice, so we need to get to the point here. The real lavender we know is anti-inflammatory. So if we put it in, a, in an area, in a, in, a, in a leg that is purple, and this is anecdotal inflammation, which means it's not yet proven by science, but we have seen it plenty of time. If we put the real lavender in a purple leg, we know that in 20 to 25 minutes, it will not be purple, because it rushes circulation to an area. The real lavender, and once again, this is anecdotal inflammation, we use to reduce tumors in breast. Uh, a while back, there was a research by the National Car uh, by the Cancer Institute that told us that uh, there's an alcohol in lavender that reduces tumors in rat. Uh, we began to use lavender, and we began to see that within three days, like clockwork, if you're able to feel the tumor in your breast in three days, is 50% less. In 45 days, you see that 87% uh, reduced or is gone. Now, complementary medicine means that you use it in conjunction with your medical doctor. And that's what this is intended to be used. And uh, we haven't seen it not work, which, which you know, also works on dogs and animals as well as people. The real lavender, we also use it uh, for colds or sinus problems or congestion because research, scientific validation tells us that it's very effective against the pneumococcus, the streptococcus bacteria. It's also antiviral. It's also antiseptic. So for those going into a hospital setting or a setting that uh, we know that it has resistant bacteria, we recommend for them to splash the real lavender a few drops in their chest. And nurses and doctors that have used this through the years, they find that they don't get sick and work in a hospital as they used to. The real lavender, because of those properties, uh, is excellent for sore throat. 
somebody has a sore throat, somebody has a phonia, which is loss of voice, uh, they will put a few drops in a glass of water, they gargle. Within two of those gargling's, uh, it's gone. Now we use this as preventive also. So we want to uh, we want to continue this uh, to prevent sore throats and things like that, which is two drops or a drop in a glass of water to gargle in the morning at night time. Uh, the real lavender is excellent as a mosquito repellent. So we use it in conjunction with other repellents like citronella, uh, eucalyptus, uh, patchouli, cedarwood atlas. Uh, and we'll show you how to do that in, in, the, in other sessions that we will have. But today we want to cover pretty much how to tell the real essential oil. So in, in reviewing, it's, it's really extremely simple. Number one, if you leave them open, and there's nothing there within two days or three days, you know it's not the real thing. If you feel the texture and it's very oily and it doesn't penetrate on your skin, you know it's not the real thing. If you, uh, if the manufacturer is telling you that after two years, the shelf life, but this oil is no longer good, you know it's not the real thing. Now, if you're using it to put in a candle, no big deal. But if you're using it for anything that I have covered, a real big deal. You're unable to use it in complementary medicine. So it's important that you use the right material for the right work that you're doing. By the way, the real lavender is antipasmodic, so it's excellent, and we use it to stop the spasm of an asthma attack. Uh, we make inhalers, we will show you in other sessions. And uh, we use cypress that open the upper respiratory passage, and we use lavender that uh, stops the, the spasm. So, once again, working in camp practice is with their family doctors. And I'll explain that also, what ACAM is all about, which is, uh, uh, if you want to know a little more about the education and long distance learning, uh, you can go to www.a-cameducation.com. Uh, we now doing long distance learning, which in real time uh, through tele video, uh, and and uh, is working very nicely. Where you at home can take the course and, and do your blending. We actually pay attention to uh, things that smell wonderful and also chemicals, environmental toxins, sick building syndrome that are harming our health and how to replace it from our home. So. We're running out of time at this moment, so I want to thank you for joining us. And join us, if you like this uh, part one, you're going to enjoy part two, where we begin to uh, talk about the oils that we use for stress and how to blend them. Thanks again, and hope to see you in part two.